Uh, today we're going to be doing physics and planetary gravity. So today we're going to explain some of the most basic, yeah, some of the most important parts about physics and unity. And then Henry's going to go through a tutorial on how to make a gravity system that's similar to Super Mario Galaxy. Okay. Um, okay, so there's a GitHub link in the slides, and maybe I should post the link to the slides in Zoom chat real quick. So everyone can access that. Okay, I think there's view sharing. So that should work. Let me know if it doesn't. Let me go back to the slideshow. Okay, so today is um, Henry is going to give you a quick sneak peek of the final product before he does his tutorial. Um, maybe it'd be easier if I went through the core concepts first and then we could switch over to your screen share, Henry. Um, but then after that, Henry's going to do the tutorial on the planetary gravity and give you some further resources. And the inspiration, of course, is Super Mario Galaxy. That's a little snippet of the final product there, right? Yeah, so it doesn't look like much um, because it's just a bunch of spheres. But if you imagine it with like graphics, you know, then it looked pretty cool. Uh, but you can see how your like character is like sort of standing on, on, on the side um, and he can like jump and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Okay. All right, so first thing is I'm going to go over rigid bodies and a lot of you might have to have already dealt with some rigid bodies, but you might learn some new things here. Um, basically, they're the component that allow your game objects to become affected by physics. Um, so they can receive realistic forces and also torque and basically you can think of torque as force affecting the rotation of something. Um, and in order for a game object to be affected by gravity or affected by forces from scripts, they have to have a rigid body component. And there's a 2D counterpart for rigid bodies just called rigid body 2D. Um, but the confusing thing for 2D is that you have to use the 2D version of every single component. So there's like rigid body 2D, uh, there's 2D colliders, like 2D box collider, 2D circle colliders and stuff like that. So um, sometimes 2D and 3D components don't interact with each other the way you want them to. So you just gotta take that into mind. Okay, rigid body properties. These are the big ones um, that I wrote out. Uh, first thing is mass, which is pretty simple. It's the mass of the object. It's in kilograms or Unity has it in default as kilograms. Um, if you turn that up, then the forces will act differently. So, so like if you have a basketball, maybe that's one kilogram, a force could easily move it. But if you have say a car, it would take a lot more force to move it. Um, drag is just the air resistance. So zero would be no air resistance. And I think the highest you can go is infinity which would pretty much keep the object from moving, but you probably shouldn't do it like that. Um, angular drag is just drag, but for torque. So um, it affects how fast something can rotate when it's affected by air. Um, another concept of drag is terminal velocity. So if you have an object falling forever, if there's drag to it, it will eventually stop speeding up. Um, because if something was in a vacuum, it would never slow down if it was falling. Um, next very important one is use gravity. Um, basically, this checkbox is for if you want to use Uni's default universal gravity. And Henry's tutorial is going to show how you can manipulate that and make your own gravity. So you'll probably want to uncheck that. Um, Next in the image I included is interpolate and collision detection, but it's not, those things aren't really things you have to worry about so often. Um, basically interpolate 
it is just something you need if the rigid body looks jittery while it's in game and it's not from lag. Um, it'll interpolate some frames of data for it. Uh, collision detection is also similar if the collision is jittery or if, it, um, if it's a really thin object, sometimes you'll need to make it continuous collision detection. Um, but it's not really used that often, I don't believe. Uh, free, the constraints are almost self-explanatory. You can freeze the position of an object and the rotation of it on all three axes. Um, so the X would be horizontal, Y would be forwards and backwards, or no, sorry, Z would be forwards and backwards, Y would be vertical. Um, same thing for rotation. Uh, if you don't want an object to move, to rotate this way, then it'd be the X. If you don't want it to rotate on this axis, Z, hopefully my hand motions are working, but um, for Y, you know, you could just click off the Y axis rotation. So that's about it for rigid bodies. Next thing is quaternions. And this is where it gets super confusing, but luckily you don't have to worry about all the math behind it usually. Um, basically, Euler angles, which are pretty much the basic angles that you'll see in Unity's inspectors, like in the transform panel, you can set the rotation. Those are the Euler angles, and they're flawed because of something called gimbal lock, um, which is something that we don't have to talk about here. But if you take CS174A, you'll talk about it a bit, and it's fun. Um, it's not fun, but it's interesting. Um, so to get around that, Unity uses quaternions um, in the inside. Usually, you don't have to deal with quaternions so much, but um, that's what it uses. And if you want the Euler angles in your scripts, you can get the Euler angles by getting the rotation and then dot Euler angles. Um, like I said, they're pretty complicated, and there's some videos that explain them well. But here, we're just going to use their simpler functions when we create and edit angles. Um, another interesting property is that if you want to combine the effects of two rotations, you don't actually add them. You multiply them together. Um, and it's also important to note that it is non-commutative. So doing, the, doing two rotations one way isn't the same as doing it the reverse way. It's not regular multiplication. It's, uh, I believe it's cross multiplication, uh, which you will also learn in CS174A if you take that. And these are some of the functions that Henry's gonna be using today. And I just wanted to make some short descriptions for them so that you get some context for them. Um, probably the most important one is add force, which just applies the force to the rigid body. Um, and you got to remember, it's not just the direction of the vector three that goes into it. You also got to take into account how large the vector is, like the magnitude of it. As Vector says from Despicable Me, it's about direction and magnitude. Um, and then the quaternion function we're going to be using today is from two rotation. And it's just, if you have a rotation of an object, and then you want it to go to a certain direction, you can use that. Um, you can get the two dis you can get a distance between two objects, or um, usually you want to use points as the as the variables for distance. Even though it says vector three, kind of it's not really a vector you put in here, it's more of a um, a set of coordinates you put in here. So say you want the distance between one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, zero on the z-axis, and the other point is two on the x-axis, y is one, and z is zero also. You put, in, you put those in the distance, it would spit out one. Um, so that's nice to have. And another thing that doesn't really have to do with the physics system so much, just how you get game objects that um, you need to find within a script is find game objects with tag. Uh, it's a bit more 
uh, efficient than using just the regular fine because it's only looking through the game objects that have a certain tag rather than all the game objects. And it'll return a complete array of all the game objects that have that tag. And I think that's about it for the context I wanted to give you guys. Are there any questions? OK, if not, oh, OK. If not, I'll let Henry take it away. OK, so um, now I will say that my throat does hurt a bit, so I might cough a bit. Uh, but it should be OK. I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, Cole, you got to Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, but basically, uh, make sure that you have your, uh, your, your um, you know, app open. Uh, let's see here. Which, do I just share my entire screen? I think that might be better. How do I? Uh, let's see here. Keep this for work. Yeah, okay. So basically, um, you're gonna wanna make a new 3D project and uh, just let me know when you guys get there. Uh, for those of you who are already there, this is sort of like the final product that we're gonna be making. So you can see we have like our little character guy um, who's just like a smushed sphere. Um, and he can, yeah, I'll show you. Uh, let's see, let's just move him closer to where the, the, we can actually see. <laughs> Wait a second, where do you go? Uh, okay, we've lost track of the character. Uh, Oh, and he's right there. Okay. Well, that is something people have. Why is it so? Okay. Well, anyways, um, we start the script now. We should see that the character is uh, currently floating. <laughs> okay. Hold on. This is very strange. Uh, I don't really know what happened here. But anyways, this shouldn't be a problem in your game. I really don't know why this is happening. I assume it's because of that, probably. Uh, oh, okay. One second, just a bit of technical difficulties. Uh, okay, this should be better. Yeah, so. Uh, here for the in. I think he's still a bit too far. There we go. So you can see the character is on the planet and he's like walking around, uh, you know, and, and you can jump. Um, so we have a first person view here. Uh, so th this is basically the outcome that we're going to make. You can go around the entire planet and stuff. Uh, and so the way that, that we're going to do this is uh, starting off, you want to make uh, two game objects. You want to make two spheres. So I'll, I'll just so like a new thing over here somewhere, I guess. Uh, let's just make a new, so create 3D object sphere right there. Um, put it, you know, where, where you want it really, is there too, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, and we'll call the first one our like player. Okay, I'll, I'll call it player two, I guess, because I already have a player. Uh, or no, I, actually, it's just called sphere. So we'll, we'll call it player. Uh, and then, then we'll make a second sphere. Uh, and this will be the planets. Uh, let's call it like uh, planet I don't know, 10 or something. Doesn't matter. You guys can call it what you want to call it. And we will increase the scale uh, to like, you know, 10, 10, or 10, uh, just as an example. OK, once we got that down, we want to take our player controller and just drag and drop that onto the player. Um, so now you just see these uh, properties here. 
Oh, it looks like it doesn't compile until we make references to your other scripts for the player controller. It won't let me drag it in. Oh, like it, it has a reference okay, sure. to gravity body. That, so it might that's need a, to make not, not a too, yeah, okay. That should be okay for, for, for now. Um, all right, in that case, we will uh, get started with the actual code then. So what you wanna do is you wanna make two scripts. Uh, one's called gravity body and one's called gravity source. Um, so just let me know when you guys finish that. And I'm gonna start with the gravity source script first because I think it makes more sense. Okay, now if we made the uh, file, uh, <clears throat> what we want to do basically is we want to set two different variables. Um, we know that we want each planet to have a certain gravity. Uh, so this basically represents the strength of the gravity. So we want to make a public float. Um, public because we want to, well, it doesn't need to be public, but if you want to be able to change it in the, uh, in the um, little area here in, in the inspector, uh, then you can make a public uh, float because you know it has decimal points if you want. Um, and we want to make it negative. And then for the range, this is basically sort of um, the range of your gravity, <laughs> which you know would, would make sense. And so you can set this to uh, something plus the the radius of your sphere. So so in in our case, our sphere here has a, a radius of ten because it's uh, ten wide, so it's divided by two sorry so it, it, it's a radius of five um and so i have it set as five default but i think in the inspector we can just change it to uh, say 10 or 15 which would make, basically mean that beyond the five radius of the actual sphere you have an additional like five or or ten uh units of space that are affected by the gravity uh so where your character will still be affected by the gravity all right, so once we have those two variables made, uh, we want to make uh, two functions. The first one will be apply gravity. Um, and so, you know, this function basically does what you think it does. It will take a rigid body and then it will apply a force onto it. All right, so we want it to be a vector three. Uh, this is not really for the force applying. This is for a different part that we're gonna work on afterwards, um, which is basically returning uh, a certain gravity vector in order to calibrate the camera correctly. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that more later. Uh, so for now, we want to get the up vector for the gravity. And how we do that is we take the position of our player. So we're going to input our player here as the parameter. Uh, so we're going to take the position of the player, uh, subtract the position of the current object, which will be the planet, because uh, each planet is a gravity source. Uh, so transform represents, it, it automatically knows it means the transform of the planet. Um, and so we're going to take that transform, get the position of it, subtract those two, and then we're, we're going to normalize uh, just so that we can uh, apply the gravity afterwards at like a constant rate. Um, now we're going to get the local up, which is going to be representing the up vector for our player. So what that means is say, for example, um, our player is here, right? So if he was actually like, you know, on the planet, his up vector shouldn't go up. It should go sort of diagonally to the, to the left because he's on the left side of the planet. Uh, you know, if it was over here, then it would go the other way, right? Uh, so we got those two variables. And now what we're checking here is if it's within the range. So we're going to use the distance function that Coleman mentioned, and we're going to take the position again of uh, both of these two things that we just calculated earlier. And we're going to check if that's less than the range. Uh, and if it is, then we know that we're within the sort of range of our planet's gravity, and we want to then apply force. Now, what you could do is you could also apply some sort of uh, scaling factor. So the farther you are away from it, uh, the less gravity gets applied. Um, and you you could do that pretty easily just by calculating uh, how how close you are to the, the planet, which you already did basically uh, with the distance function. Um, 
But since we aren't doing that, we basically just apply a constant force no matter what, or we're going to take the up vector that we just calculated, which will represent um, like the up vector of the gravity that we want, which um, in our case, let's go back here, basically goes towards the planet um, as you would expect. So once again, if we are here, it goes this way. And if we were here, then it would go this way. So we're going to take uh, that vector and we're going to multiply it by the gravity. And actually, sorry, um, it, it, this vector uh, goes up this way, not, not down because, um, because of the way that we calculate it right over here. Um, and that's why we have gravity as negative because we want to point down. All right. Now for this part here, um, don't worry about it too much. Just just type it in. Uh, what we need it for is for afterwards when we're trying to figure out where the camera should, should be. Um, and otherwise, if we're out of the range, then we want to return the zero vector because there is no gravity. All right. Let me know if if people have a question. Okay. All right, I'll assume that there's no questions for now. So uh, yeah, we know that this function will then apply gravity um, by applying a force. And that force will go uh, towards the center of the planet. And so that's how we simulate gravity. Um, and since we're doing this, it means that we'll have to um, ignore that use gravity um, thing in the inspector that Cole uh, showed, I showed you earlier right here. So we're going to have to ignore this, uh, which I think the script does in player controller, but you can uncheck it too if you want. Um, all right, so now we want a quick little distance function that I just made here. And basically, we're, we're making a slightly modified version of the normal distance function. Uh, and we're going to use this line here. And what this does is it gets the sphere collider uh, since we know, or since we're assuming that every gravity source will be a sphere, uh, every sphere has to have a sphere collider or should have a sphere collider. And so we're going to get that component. <coughs> and then that component will have a radius. And so we're going to just you know set that to a variable. And then we're going to calculate the distance and what this line here does is basically we're we're trying to find how much additional distance um, there is uh, between the like the gravity like between the character and the range of the gravity, All right? And we do this because uh, it's needed for afterwards when when we want to calculate the camera. All right, now why do I keep talking about the camera? Well. The issue is with just one planet, it's not too big of a deal. But once you have multiple planets like here, say our our player was like somewhere in between these two planets, right? And and you try and jump between them. What happens is um, the way that the, the player controller script is made, it'll try and um for it it matches the direction of the camera to wherever your gravity is. And if you're in between two planets, what it does is it'll apply the it basically loops through all the planets and applies each planet's gravity and what happens when you do that is for each instantaneous moment for for each like tiny frame that you're looping through um it'll first think that you're on this planet and so the camera will will face as if you were being affected by the gravity for this planet uh but then since you're also in the range of this planet for example um then your camera would in, would immediately sort of swap to imagining that you were supposed to be looking uh, from the perspective of this planet. Uh, so basically what I mean is say we were here and this is your, your character and you would expect to see something like, like this, um, but what, what would actually happen is for one frame you would see this or for like, yeah, for a split second you would see this, but then like immediately after because uh, this planet here is also within the range, you'll see something more like this. Um, and if that happens, like, you know, six, 60 frames a second, and if there's multiple planets, 
then your camera gets extremely messed up. Uh, so that's where we have to basically choose the planet that we're closest to and face the camera towards that planet. All right, so that means uh, gravity swirl should be done. So we're going to do gravity body now. So if you haven't, you want to make a gravity body script. OK, and right, we're going to do a quick thing where we just require a rigid body. Um, and this is needed because uh, we want the gravity body to basically be the player, to be everything that um, gravity can apply to. And in, in, in order to apply gravity to something, we, we have to add a force. And in order to add that force, we have to add it to a rigid body. And so that's why we have this line here. All right, so we're going to define two variables. We have our rigid body, which automatically refers to um, the component of our object, which is what whatever the script is attached to as I wrote in the comments. And we're also going to get a list of all planets. All right, and how we do that is using the uh, function that Cole mentioned. So we're going to find game objects with these tag planet. All right, so this means we have to go back to our inspector here. And you'll notice that on the planets I made earlier, they have a planet tag. And so for this new planet, we also want to have a planet tag. Um, now, I haven't made it all already, but you can just click add tag. Um, you can click plus, type in planets, save it, and then you'll, you'll have to do the same thing. <coughs> all right, so. We're just going to quickly change this to have a planet tag, like so. Um, all right. Now, using the rigid body, so this refers to our player, we're going to manually uh, set the gravity to, to false. So this is why you don't actually need to change it in the inspector, because our script will make sure that it's false because otherwise it'll have two different gravities and then the physics won't work anymore because you'll be constantly falling even when you aren't. And we're also going to force this so that the rotation is frozen because we want to manually uh, change the rotation. Um, it's important to note that this doesn't actually freeze rotation, it, it just doesn't make a change without you manually changing it via code. So it won't try and change based on like the, the default settings. <coughs> All right, so we want to put that inside our awake function. And the awake function runs um, when the object is awake, basically. So when, when it gets uh, started. Uh, it, it is a bit more nuanced because the object can fall asleep, but that's not, that's not really like a big deal for us. So. Yeah. Okay. So we have our fixed update function. Um, and this is a unity event as our little text thing shows. And what it does is um, it gets run a certain number of times every second and it's um the difference between this and updates is you know pretty pretty clear. It's it's just it's fixed, so it runs at fixed time intervals. Um, which also means that it runs fewer times than, than updates. Okay. So we're gonna make a gravity up vari uh, variable. Uh, we want it to be vector three because gravity is obviously a vector. And we're going to set that to the zero vector for now. We're also going to do something like, like this. Uh, this is just the way that I do it. it you know, it's, you, you, you don't have to do it like, like this, but you know, you're probably not, not going to have a planet that's more than 99,000 um, units away. So the planet works. Um, and so what we're going to do is because we already have a list of all, of, all the planets, we're going to loop through that list of planets. And then we're going to get that the planet at each index. 
and then we're going to get the gravity source component, which is this script right here that we just made. And so this means that we want to actually add that component to our planet. So just drag and drop onto the planet. Um, should look something like this here. If it won't compile still, then just don't worry about it. Um, but it, I think it should be okay. All right. So this, this line here, um, we're gonna get the planet and then for each planet, we, we want the planet to apply its own gravity. And you know, as we did er earlier, that planet's gravity will only get applied if we're within the range. And then also this function will return a vector three that I mentioned earlier. And what this is, is the up vector, like the, the up vector for that planet's gravity, depending on where you're on the, the planet. And so we need this to calibrate the camera properly. So these uh, four lines here basically check and find the minimum distance and it assigns. So it wants to find the planet that is the closest, uh, but, but not just, just closest by the radius, but like closest by, by the surface basically. Um, and so that's, that's why we use this custom distance function that's based on the radius. All right, uh, so yeah, every every time that we find one that's closer to the to the character than the current closest, we want to update our gravity up, and we want to uh, reassign our minimum distance. Okay, so after we do all of that, we want to then make sure that we rotate our uh, our character pro properly. Uh, because if we go back to our sphere, which is right here. Uh, and say so we go back in game. <coughs> Sorry. What is going on here? Oh, I, I think it's probably because of the extra. Uh, things I made up here. So I'll, I'll just delete these because they don't really matter. But okay, so you'll you'll notice that if we go over to our scene viewer that you know as you walk along your your player is rotated. So it's not just like pointing upwards. Uh, and so that's what uh, this line of code here does. So it takes the quaternion and it applies that from to road rotation function. And it does it on the current of, of vector for our object. So that'll be uh, this green arrow right here, or in, in the direction of this green arrow. Uh, the, the up vector is always just a unit vector, I believe. Um, but it will be in the director in, in the uh, direction of this green arrow. And so we take that and we compare it to the up vector for our gravity, which is basically uh, from our character to the center of the planet. It's basically that direction. And so for every frame, sorry, for, for every frame, there's going to be a tiny, tiny difference between the new gravity's um, up vector because we move um, and the previous rotation of the player. Uh, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Basically, we're, we're saying that if we move, say, this way, oh, whoops, I keep moving the camera. I think that's what, yeah. If we move this way, um, say, like, by that much, our gravity vector has changed from, like, here to here to here to here, which is a slight difference. And so we want the character's rotation to compensate for that slight difference. All right. And so then... As Cole mentioned, we want to then multiply it by the rotation. And it's important that you do this step after. So if I was to, for example, delete this 
and let's do a times equal here. What you would see is um quite bad. Let's see if we can do a demo. All right, let's see here. Yeah, so you'll notice that sometimes it's it's okay, but then it'll randomly do these weird. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> basically don't don't do that. Okay. And so now that we have both scripts written, uh, there's only one step left, which is basically attaching all the things properly. So hopefully now you can attach your uh, gravity source to the planet and your gravity body to the player. So just let me know if you guys get that down. Uh, we also want to make sure that we attach the main camera to the sphere. Um, and I have the rotation set at minus 45. You can change it to what you want it to be, but I think this, this works. Yeah. Basically, the uh, minus 45 changes it so that you look more towards the upper half of your screen rather than towards the planet, because that, that's not super interesting. Okay, so if we've attached all the components and we attach the, the main camera, oh, also make sure that your projection is in perspective. Um, if you change it to orthographic, well, I can show you, it, but, it, but it looks very weird. So don't, don't do that. Uh, sometimes it's, it's good to be orth orthographic depending on how you're coding your uh, game. But for ours, we're just gonna stick with perspective. Um, so yeah, what we want is you have these two. So we're going to have the player controller and the rigid body, oh, and, and I guess the gravity body. Uh, but you know th this doesn't have any actual uh, parameters you have to change. So you can just chuck that on it. Make sure that you have this though, because uh, you know nothing will happen otherwise. Um, and I changed these to interpolate and discrete. Not sure why exactly anymore, but I do remember that if you don't do this, once again, bad things happen. So I think that interpolate generally is is good uh, if you don't want to have like janky motion. Uh, so yeah. And then for our player controller, you can adjust things as you want. I have jump force uh, increase from the default, I think. And you also want this uh, grounded mask. Um, now this we didn't really cover because it's 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 in the player con controller script, but it's basically which surfaces count as ground. And so if we go to planets, uh, because the, they're on the default layer by default, because that's how default works, um, then our sphere will detect that as ground. Now we can change it to, to something else um, if that's how you want. Oops, sorry. If that that's what you want in your game, but uh yeah so so you can make like a new layer call it you know ground and then put all, all your grounds onto that and so that means that your character will only be able to jump if you're on one of those layers okay yeah for each planet uh hopefully you just have one right now you can have more but it's, it's just easier if we just do it with, with one for now um you want to apply uh, these uh, as you wish. So gravity, I have a set of default in range uh, minus 13. And what that means basically is say for this planet, which has a radius of five, it'll basically be an additional eight units in all directions. And so hopefully, if I didn't do anything wrong, if you guys try and run the game now, 
things should work properly. So just test that out and let me know how it goes. Do we have any progress in, in, in the update? Okay, so far. Okay. Um, yeah, so now, now that we have that working, um sorry, okay um you guys can try putting down uh, like a few more planets uh sort of like how i i have done here and mess around with the uh, range and, and the gravity and you'll notice that there's one thing that i could have maybe changed but this isn't too big of a deal, but basically, get with the If our character is too close to do to uh, two different planets, as hopefully she is right now. Okay, there you go. Uh, Here we are. You'll you'll notice about oh sorry I think I have the uh, the wrong thing on right now. Which oh right six so. okay. So you'll you'll notice that we have our little character here, and you know he moves around the planet. And the issue is that say we try and like jump. Uh, so normally, if you jump, you just, you know you jump up and you go back down again. Uh, but if I try and jump between these two planets, what will happen is that the camera changes, but it changes like instantaneously, which is a bit disorienting, uh, as you'll notice. Uh, Now I haven't actually implemented this uh, yet, but the way that you would get around this is by using a LERP function. So you can do a bit of research on your own time, but basically what the LERP function does is it sort of scales uh, things. And so if you look at the, like in, in the scene view, uh, you can see that, that the camera basically like instantly switches uh, like so. And so what we want to do is change it so that the camera will sort of gradually rotate um, when you change gravities. Uh, oh, now we're upside down. Uh, so something, <clears throat> sorry. Something else to note is that if you're in between too many gravities, sometimes uh, you start going into this weird like state here where you're just like constantly floating around. Uh, like right now, you see the little guys just sort of floating between the two planets. Uh, now, this isn't really like a fault of the system because the system is working as intended uh, since, you know, the gravities are the same strength. Like if I was to, to change this gravity to, you know, minus 20, then he immediately falls back down. Right, but because they're they're the same strength, um, it makes it so that you don't really have any way of sort of forcing the object towards one specific one, uh, one specific planet. Uh, so that's also something that you could improve on if you wanted. 
uh, oh, like a few ways that I can think of maybe would, would be to uh, do the scaling thing that I mentioned earlier. So the farther you are away from the planet, the less the gravity gets affected or the less the gravity affects you, the, the, the player. And so like in our case here, that would basically mean that our um, sphere, oh, right. Also, I had changed the scale of the Y component to, to two. So it looks more like a, like a person, I, I guess. No, he's still just like a sphere basically. Um, so yeah, so you could basically scale it. So um, since right, right now the character is closer to the right planets, um, because you're closer, the gravity would be affected more. And so you would still uh, shift towards the planet on the right. Um, and obviously now you would go towards the planet on the left. And so if people want, we can actually just try implementing that right now. Um, but yeah, the, the official tutorial part is over now. Just wanted to give you a simple uh, implementation of sort of this whole planetary gravity thing. If, if you search online, uh, there, there's a few resources, but the one that, that I will like takes a very, very long time to implement, um, but it does do it in a very nice way. It just takes like, like five hours. Um, and it uses like a ton of complex functions. Um, so this is sort of my simplified version. <coughs> um, yeah, sorry. give me a second. Does anyone have any questions or have they run into any trouble? Uh, not uh, Henry. I was thinking I could do a quick mini tutorial about gizmos that would help with this. Oh, like sure. Yeah, stuff. I was thinking about that actually. Um, yeah, yeah. You can oh, cool. go go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Here I'll screen share on my desktop because that's where I'm working on my unique project. Um. So if if I understand correctly, basically what what Cole wants to go through is uh this this uh sort of neat feature called gizmos, and what that does is or at least like the way that I've used it in the past is it lets you visualize like the range basically for our planet. Um, I think that's what Cole wants to do. Uh. That's Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, yeah, I just want it. It'll just be really helpful to visualize the range of the planet's gravity. And then also if later we wanted to do that idea you mentioned about the gravity getting weaker, Later on, we can make a gizmo for that threshold too. But for now, I'll just do a quick intro to, um, well, how do I minimize this thing up here? Cause I gotta switch. Oh, okay, I can move it, I guess. Um, yeah, let me give you guys a quick introduction to gizmos if you haven't used them before. Um, so there's the special Unity event called on draw gizmos that we'll be using in the gravity, oh, sorry, not the gravity body script. It'll be the gravity source script where the planets are. So let me do that. Void on draw gizmos, I think it is. I hope I spelled that right. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a little wire sphere that will represent how far the gravity affects the player. Uh, so we'll be, all we'll need is the range, I believe. Um, so we will call the method gizmos dot draw wire sphere. And we'll need to get the center. So we can say transform the position, which will just be the center of the planet usually. Um, and the radius will be range. And then what that will do in the scene view, every frame, it will update the gizmo as long as you have, okay, cool, we can see it there. 
as long as we have this enabled, the gizmos visibility, we can see some spheres that go around the planets. And you can see what I was working with here. I got two intersecting gravity bodies. Um, so maybe I wanted to be a bit neater. Um, I can move one of the planets away some or shrink its gravity field. Uh, another neat thing you can do with gizmos is that you can change the color. Uh, and yeah, it's gizmos color equals, let's use green, just to keep it simple. Oh, although green is what's used for like sphere colliders, so maybe we'll use something else like magenta. Sure, whatever you would like. And wow, it's just the color. Awesome. So it's like I said, if you wanted a threshold for the weakening gravity, you could do that. And yeah, 10 out of 10. Thank you. Okay, yeah. That's all I wanted to put in there. Anyone have any questions about that? Okay, Ooh, let me stop streaming, there we go.